When Nietzsche Wept is the 1992 historical fiction novel written by American existentialist Irvin D. Yalom. Predominantly set in Vienna in the 1880s, the story entertains a hypothetical meeting between real-life figures Dr. Joseph Brewer and philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, the therapeutic result of which leads to the creation of modern psychoanalysis. Given Yalom's background as emeritus professor of psychology at Stanford University, the novel serves as a literary evaluation of the history of philosophy and psychoanalytic practice. Thematically, the novel touches on fear, despair, desire, mental illness, medical treatment, psychotherapy, hypnosis, and limerence, romantic obsession. When Nietzsche Wept was adapted into a feature film in 2007 by Millennium Films. Told in the third-person limited POV, the story begins in Vienna in 1882. Famous 40-year-old Jewish doctor, Joseph Brewer, is met in a cafe by Lou Salome, a gorgeous Russian lady. Lou tells Dr. Brewer that her close friend, a young man named Friedrich Nietzsche, is in dire need of treatment for his migraines. Lou claims Dr. Brewer is the only person who can rid Nietzsche of his suicidal despair, brought on by an illness doctors cannot identify. Lou cannot stand to see the world lose one of its budding philosophers. Lou convinces Dr. Brewer to examine Nietzsche, as long as he keeps her involvement a secret. She also asks Dr. Brewer to keep his status as physician a secret as well. Fascinated by this so-called despair, which he himself suffers following the sexual obsession of a former female patient named Anna O. Dr. Brewer believes he can cure the matter via a new method that he calls the talking treatment. Nietzsche reluctantly travels to Vienna to be examined by Dr. Brewer. Morose and unfriendly, Nietzsche declares he cannot benefit from treatment in a clinic. Later, Dr. Brewer is called up to Nietzsche's guest house room, where he finds the philosopher moribund on the floor. Dr. Brewer counsels Nietzsche through the night until he makes a recovery from his violent migraines. Nietzsche then warms up and agrees to remain in Dr. Brewer's care for one month, under one condition. Through talking, Dr. Brewer must allow Nietzsche to help him with his despair, just as Dr. Brewer is helping Nietzsche with his. On his walk home, Dr. Brewer decides that this radical new treatment Nietzsche has suggested might be of use. Considering how his marriage to Mathilde is in an awful state and how he's losing his will to live, Dr. Brewer decides to act as patient as well as doctor. At first, the daily therapy sessions between the two men are a bit rocky and contentious, but as time unfolds, they shed their personal baggage and grow more comfortable with each other. Secrets are shared, deep-seated fears, desires and existential anxieties discussed, and soon, a healing process is underway for both Nietzsche and Dr. Brewer. Soon, the notion of limerence is broached. Nietzsche is romantically obsessed with Luz Salome, while Dr. Brewer fantasizes about leaving his wife for a former patient named Bertha Pappenheim. Like Nietzsche, Dr. Brewer treated Bertha with the talking treatment, falling in love with her along the way. The two men share these carnal infatuations with one another, noting how much of their lives have been hijacked by such overwhelming desires. Dr. Brewer wastes hours on end obsessing over his longing for Bertha, which detracts from his ability to be a loving father and husband. Dr. Brewer can't eat or sleep, all he wants to do is leave his life behind and start anew with Bertha in Italy. Nietzsche emboldens Dr. Brewer to act upon his desires before time runs out. Dr. Brewer consults his close friend and medical student, Sigmund Freud. Dr. Brewer bounces ideas of his young disciple, in exchange, Dr. Brewer aids Freud with his studies. Freud becomes intrigued by Dr. Brewer's therapy sessions with Nietzsche. After Nietzsche and Dr. Brewer visit a cemetery one day, in which Dr. Brewer's mother, father, and brother happen to be interred, Nietzsche realizes the doctor's mother was named Bertha. This opens up a philosophical well of untapped emotion regarding the unconscious fear of aging, dying, regret, and letting go of the past. Arriving back home, Dr. Brewer calls Freud to come over and hypnotize him. Freud does so, and while Dr. Brewer is under hypnosis, he acts out his fantasy of leaving his family for a life with Bertha in Italy. Dr. Brewer emphasizes deliberate decision-making as a means of achieving happiness, choosing a vocation, whom to marry, where to live, etc. When Dr. Brewer comes to, he realizes that he has already, subconsciously, self-actualized the life he dreamt of all along. Through hypnotherapy, Dr. Brewer purges his obsession of Bertha and begins down the path of healing. 
Now recovered, Dr. Brewer can properly treat Nietzsche's obsession with Lou Salome. Nietzsche weeps and bemoans his unfulfilling life, expressing his desire to live normally. Nietzsche confesses that the root of his despair and obsession is autophobia, fear of being alone. When Dr. Brewer admits that Lou Salome was behind the entire therapy treatment to begin with, Nietzsche is stunned. In a twist of irony, Nietzsche realizes that he leads the very life he chose as a little boy, and now must live the rest of his days as a lonely, isolated philosopher. By having this epiphany, Nietzsche is able shed his obsession with Luz Salome and continues his calling as a philosophical scribe. When Nietzsche wept was hailed as an intelligent, carefully researched, richly imagined novel by the Boston Globe, as well as strong and authentic by Washington Post Book World. The novel has also been adapted as a stage play by Luciano Cazzo. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.